Archaeologists have begun a major new excavation of the Roman city of Pompeii. It was destroyed nearly 2,000 years ago after Mount Vesuvius erupted. The ancient city of Pompeii bears witness to a cataclysmic event that unfolded nearly two millennia ago, an eruption that transformed its landscape forever. In 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius unleashed its fury, blanketing Pompeii in a thick shroud of ash and debris, entombing its inhabitants in a layer of history. Yet, despite the passage of centuries, Pompeii remains a treasure trove of untold stories and hidden wonders waiting to be unearthed. What was the city of Pompeii like before tragedy struck? How has civilization helped in getting and examining some of these discoveries? Join us to look at something terrifying emerged in Pompeii and scientists are panicking. Number 20. Ancient Romans in Pompeii had perfect teeth. Careful examination revealed the terrible fate of several people in the wake of the volcanic catastrophe that destroyed Pompeii. Head injuries, probably caused by falling debris, were a major factor in the deaths of many people. According to multi-layer CT scans, as they dug farther into the past, they found that the bone-like firmness of the chalk presented difficulties when studying 30 body casts made with hard plaster in the early 1800s. Modern, state-of-the-art 16-layer CT technology was crucial for precise analysis. Amidst the depressing discoveries, an unexpected surprise surfaced. The teeth of the Pompeians were in astonishingly good shape. The local water supply was high in fluorine, and their low-sugar diet, rich in fruits and vegetables. Thus, they had great oral health, despite the terrible things that happened to them. The benefits of the Mediterranean diet are reaffirmed here. Nonetheless, tooth damage was noticeable, most likely from repetitive jaw movements like biting or snapping. Beyond what may be seen at first glance, the importance of their oral health may provide light on other aspects of their life. Expert examination is expected to provide important facts about Pompeian society, including their eating patterns and general health according to academics. As dental expert Elisa Vanacore notes, the health of their teeth speaks volumes, pointing to a lifestyle defined by nutritional richness and oral care that transcends current norms. Number 19. Dogs of Pompeii In the shadowy corners of Marcus Vesonius Primus's house, among the peaceful atrium, where the soothing pitter-patter of rain formerly danced across the mosaic tiles, lay a quiet witness to a tragedy trapped in time. Tethered resolutely to a post, a devoted guardian dog stood watch, its old collar carrying the weight of its job. As the sky darkened and the ground rocked with the wrath of Mount Vesuvius, the dog's destiny became hopelessly interwoven with the apocalyptic events occurring around it. In the strange calm of the atrium, where formerly laughter and chatter filled the air, the dog's presence lingered, a sad reminder of the relationship between man and beast. Cast in plaster decades later, its figure contorted in a wordless scream, the dog's dying moments were preserved for all eternity. The evocative picture offers a narrative of heroism and sadness, of a creature connected by devotion even in the face of imminent catastrophe. As the explosion released its wrath, the ash started to descend like a blanket, covering the atrium in a smothering embrace. Trapped and defenseless, the dog's attempts were hopeless against the constant barrage of volcanic material. With each ragged breath, its chest heaved in a desperate fight for life, but the limits of its collar around its neck held firm, sentencing it to a protracted and excruciating fate. The cast of the dog, with its jaws open and fangs bared, says eloquently about the horrible event it underwent. In its twisted shape, trapped in time, we sense the raw intensity of its struggle, a heroic battle against the inevitability of destiny. As the ash settled and the world went quiet, the devoted guardian breathed its last, a mute witness to the tragedy that consumed Pompeii. Number 18. Perfectly Preserved Shrine 
Unveiled within the laborious excavation operations is a holy sanctuary steeped in the whispers of antiquity, a 2,000-year-old shrine filled with magnificent wall murals that tell stories of ancient devotion and wealth. Surrounded by the ruins of a bygone period, the shrine, situated inside the walls of a once grand mansion, gives a look into the privileged lifestyles of Pompeii's elite. As archaeologists gently dig the site, the magnificence of the temple unfolds, a tribute to the richness of its benefactors. Professor Ingrid Rowland of the University of Notre Dame adds that such opulent displays were reserved for only the most rich citizens of Pompeii. Within the shrine's holy chambers, a beautiful garden and peaceful lake previously afforded sanctuary from the busy world outside, while the ashes of burned offerings hint to ancient ceremonies steeped in mystique. The wall paintings, painstakingly maintained in their original colors, give a unique peek into the creative talent of Pompeii's people. Depicting a variety of flora, snake, and a brilliant peacock, the rich design appeals to a profound regard for nature and the sacred. Yet it is the preservation of these hues, protected by the embrace of volcanic ash and rock, from the tragic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, that made this find so unique. However, the quest of revealing this old treasure has not been without its hurdles. Early excavations going back to 1748 frequently proved destructive to the fragile remains, leaving behind a broken riddle of the past. Yet, despite the passage of centuries, the shrine and its brilliant paintings have remained, a monument to the continuing fascination of Pompeii's hidden mysteries. Number 17. Gone in 15 minutes. A massive cloud of ash and chemicals spewed by Vesuvius in 79 AD took roughly 15 minutes to kill the people of Pompeii, study reveals. The estimated 2,000 individuals who perished in the old Roman city when they could not evacuate were not swamped by the lava, but rather asphyxiated by the fumes and ashes and eventually coated in volcanic debris to leave a record of their physical presence millennia later. The study by researchers from the Department of Earth and Geoenvironmental Sciences of the University of Bari, in collaboration with the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology and the British Geological Survey in Edinburgh, has revealed the duration of the so-called pyroclastic flow, a dense, fast-moving flow of solidified lava pieces, volcanic ash and hot gases that hit the ancient Roman city minutes after the volcano erupted. The fatal cloud had a temperature of over 100 degrees and was composed of CO2, chlorides, particles of incandescent ash, and volcanic glass, stated Roberto Isaiah, senior researcher of the Vesuvius Observatory of the INGV. The aim of the work was to develop a model to try to understand and quantify the impact of pyroclastic flows on the inhabited area of Pompeii, about 10 kilometers and 6 miles from Vesuvius, he continued. The analysis reveals that the population had no escape, and most of those who perished suffocated in their houses and beds or in the streets and squares of the city. Isaiah's model believes the gases, ash and volcanic particles would have blanketed the city for between 10 and 20 minutes. Number 16. A Mother and Child Through the eerie medium of plaster casts, the heart-wrenching image of a scared child cradled in his mother's arms unfolds, a heartbreaking monument to the anguish and sorrow that befell Pompeii on that fateful day in 79 AD, as Mount Vesuvius unleashed its wrath onto the unsuspecting town. The boy, only four years of age, sought shelter in the arms of his loving mother, instinctively running to her side in a desperate quest for comfort and protection. The moment, made even more terrible by the presence of the boy's father and brother, puts plain the raw grief of a family ripped apart by events beyond their control. In the laboratory of the Pompeii archaeological site, among the laborious restoration work and analysis of 86 castings, the grief of this fractured family echoes through the centuries. 
discovered inside the boundaries of the House of the Golden Bracelet, the melancholy tableau serves as a sobering reminder of the fragility of life and the indiscriminate nature of calamity. As scientists carefully put together the parts of Pompeii's sad history, the wordless cry of the scared kid and the reassuring hug of his mother resonate through the corridors of time, inspiring sentiments of grief and pity in everyone who bore witness to their predicament. Number 15. Mount Vesuvius For decades, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD has been buried in the mists of time, its precise date a topic of academic discussion and conjecture. Initially, the popularly accepted date of August 24, drawn from a 1508 printed copy of Pliny the Younger's letter to Tacitus, reigned for nearly five centuries. Pliny's first-hand account gave a critical view into the devastating event, but over time the precision of the date got muddled by centuries of manuscript copying. Amidst this historical fog, a handful of archaeologists and scientists ventured to challenge the established story, proposing alternate dates for the eruption ranging from October to November. Their doubt was exacerbated by archaeological evidence, such as remnants of fall fruits and clothes used for colder weather, uncovered during excavations in the late 18th and 20th centuries. Recent findings, including fragments of pomegranates, Victims clothed in heavy clothing and wine-filled containers suggestive of the grape harvest season further inflamed the argument. Additionally, investigations of prevailing winds in the Campania area revealed that the debris pattern from the eruption fit more closely with an autumnal occurrence. In a monumental discovery in October 2018, Italian researchers unearthed a charcoal inscription going back to October 17th of 79 AD, presenting a tantalizing hint to the eruption's timing. Collaborative study in 2022 reinforced this result, putting the eruption to October 24th, that was 25th, with extraordinary accuracy. Number 14, the cast of Pompeii. In the terrible aftermath of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, the once thriving city of Pompeii lay cloaked in stillness, its people smothered by the lethal embrace of toxic gases and stifling ash. Their corpses, entombed under layers of searing rubble, were trapped in time, mute witnesses to the horrific events that had occurred. It was not until 1870 that the pioneering archaeologist Giuseppe Fiorelli found a new way to preserve the haunting traces left by the dead. By filling the gaps left by decaying bodies with wet plaster, Fiorelli recorded the dying moments of Pompeii's citizens in spectacular detail. As the plaster solidified, the surrounding dirt was painstakingly removed, uncovering realistic casts of human people, animals, and common things. Among the most dramatic are the castings from the field of the fugitives, where the frantic efforts of families to escape the oncoming catastrophe are recorded in terrible detail. The eerie countenance of the whole family from the Casa del Bracciale d'Oro, caught in a last embrace, tells volumes of the human tragedy that befell Pompeii. Yet, it is the little touches that give insights into the life that previously thrived among the rubble. The cast of a man recovered at the Casa del Crypto Portico still carrying the impression of the shoes, studded with iron studs, reveals a story of everyday life unexpectedly cut short. Similarly, the translucent cast created in 1984 at the Villa of Lucius, Crassius Tertius in Oplantis, gives a window into the goods of the departed, exposing jewels and coins that once graced their figure. Number 13. Villa of the Mysteries Nestled just outside the limits of Pompeii, the Villa of the Mysteries remains as a witness to the luxury and elegance of ancient Roman culture. Once the estate of a prominent family, this well-preserved mansion gives a fascinating peek into a bygone period, locked in time by the ash of Mount Vesuvius. Despite the horrific eruption that consumed the area, the villa escaped astonishingly unharmed, its walls and ceilings retaining only faint evidence of the cataclysmic event. 
but it is the villa's pièce de résistance, the beautiful paintings gracing its walls that really captivates the imagination. Nearly intact, these colorful paintings are among the best examples of Roman artwork, their detailed details and rich colors affording a glimpse into the past. Yet, the exact significance behind these captivating paintings remains buried in obscurity, provoking intense discussion among academics. While some interpret the images as showing the initiation procedures of a secret cult dedicated to Dionysus, the god of wine, others give alternate hypotheses, each contributing to the mysterious attraction of the mansion. Adding to the villa's mystery is the discovery of a Roman wine press, hinting at the family's capacity to create their own libations. With spas, gardens, temples, and huge kitchens, the villa was a self-contained paradise, its life stretching over two centuries before to the eruption. Beyond its boundaries, a thriving farm secured the family's self-sufficiency, a tribute to their riches and position. However, the villa's trip through time has not been without its problems. Uncovered in 1909, it suffered early dangers from the weather, with water damage and fading paint casting a shadow over its magnificence. Early efforts at preservation, like the application of wax, mistakenly ruined the frescoes, losing them of their original brightness. Fortunately, in 2013, a major restoration and preservation effort infused new life into the house, conserving its riches for decades to come. Today, painstaking research and restoration efforts guarantee that the villa's history remains, affording visitors a look into the rich tapestry of Roman life and culture. Number 12. Eyewitness Account In history, among the turmoil and destruction wreaked by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE, one individual stands as a beacon of eyewitness testimony, Pliny the Younger. Amidst the blazing tempest that devoured Pompeii and its surrounds, this Roman youth bore witness to the tragic events happening before his own eyes. Nestled inside the protection of his uncle Pliny, the elder's house at Misenum, Pliny the Younger, along with his mother Plinia, found themselves unsuspecting observers to nature's fury. Little did they realize that the calm serenity of their everyday lives would soon be broken by the rumblings of an awakened volcano. As the day dawned on August 24, 79 CE, the world appeared to unfold at its customary pace. Yet when the sun reached its maximum, the calm of Mycenaeum was disrupted by the terrifying roar originating from Vesuvius. With rising fear, Pliny the Younger and his family gazed in terror as the mountain released its pent-up wrath against the unsuspecting countryside. While numerous others bore witness to the eruption's terrible repercussions, it was Pliny the Younger who would immortalize the tragic events in a series of letters recorded for the famed Roman historian Tacitus. Through his vivid memories, archived for posterity, we get insight into the dread and mayhem that seized the area during those fatal hours. In the years that followed, Pliny the Younger's writings served as a lifeline to the past, affording students and historians an insight into the heart-wrenching catastrophe that befell Pompeii and its residents. Through his eyewitness narrative, we are taken back in time, standing on the edge of history as Vesuvius unleashed its vengeance onto the old city. Number 11. Public Laundry in the busy urban setting of ancient Rome, where the bustle of everyday life reverberated down narrow streets and congested alleyways, the demand for cleanliness was vital even among the humblest of citizens. For individuals staying in multi-story apartment buildings, space was a commodity, provided to few, demanding imaginative solutions for everyday duties such as laundry. Enter the neighborhood Launderette a community place where urbanites congregate to rinse their clothing in the middle of a busy city. Recently restored and exposed to the public by archaeologists, this old Roman edifice gives a fascinating peek into the everyday routines of city people of yesteryear. 
Within its confines, enormous bathtubs urge tired hands to scrub away the filth of the day, while a press stands waiting to smooth out wrinkles and creases. Stone basins, previously teeming with activity, testify to the skill of dyeing textiles in brilliant colors, providing a burst of color to the monotony of daily life. Yet, perhaps the most remarkable part of this historic launderette lies in its odd choice of cleaning agent, urine. Utilized for its easily accessible nature and acidic qualities, pea served as the detergent of choice for Roman washing. Imagine the scene, a busy company overflowing with the strong perfume of ammonia, while workers meticulously washed and cleaned items in preparation for the drying process. And drying, it appears, brought its own aromatic issues. Perched on the building's roof, newly cleaned clothing basked in the warm embrace of the sun, their wet threads blending with the urban clamor below. Undoubtedly, the ensuing perfume would have been a long cry from the lovely smell of a spring wind. Number 10. Horses of Pompeii In 2018, during excavations near the Villa of the Mysteries, the skeletons of three horses surfaced from the layers of ash, a mournful reminder of Vesuvius's terrible eruption. Among them, two wore unique harnesses, raising excitement among historians about their significance in Roman society. Perhaps hitched in a frantic effort to escape the volcanic wrath or merely part of regular routines, these horses give a peek into Roman equestrian customs. Despite their terrible state, their finding provides potential for understanding ancient horsemanship. Interestingly, these equine companions were uncovered as part of Operation Artemis, an Italian police inquiry into stolen antiques. What started as a hunt of criminals led to the revelation of a forgotten component of Roman culture. Number 9. The Middle Class In 2018, researchers released insights into middle-class life in Pompeii via the excavation of the House of the Lararium. Director Gabriel Zuchtriegel emphasized the hopes and vulnerabilities of its occupants, who embellished their humble abode with a space for domestic spirit worship. Exploring the bottom level found a basic bedroom with a cot and wooden chest beside a practical storage area. Despite limited budget, attempts to decorate the courtyard contrasted with the plain storage room, a poignant depiction of pragmatism above fancy. A hallway cabinet traditionally stored cookware and plates, symbolizing the culinary routines of everyday life. Some of these items were made from bronze or glass. Through diligent excavation, the lost voices of Pompeii's middle class reverberate, affording a look into the problems and ambitions of antiquity. Number 8. Graffiti In the remnants of Pompeii, a rare glimpse into Roman street art emerges, preserved beneath layers of ash. Unlike the scratched graffiti of antiquity, painted messages adorn walls, offering insights into daily life and political intrigue. The interesting part is the uncanny resemblance to modern expression of thoughts and emotions. Some graffiti, likely sponsored by candidates, urge citizens to vote, while others serve as scathing attack ads. Amidst the political discourse, explicit and lewd messages reveal the Romans' open attitudes towards sexuality. Messages like, I despise your pregnancy, Salvia, and Romula satisfies her man here and everywhere, provide a candid window into the social mores of ancient Pompeii. Though fleeting, these painted expressions endure as echoes of a bygone era, shedding light on the complexities of Roman society. Number 7. A Headless Victim In the shadow of Mount Vesuvius, among the ruins of Pompeii, a terrible narrative unfolds. A man whose destiny was sealed by the fury of nature. His open-mouthed skull, recovered near his corpse, gives a look into the last moments of his existence. The man was popularly called Unluckiest Man. 
Initially supposed to have been crushed by a big boulder, the reality surrounding his fate emerges as archaeologists explore the secrets of the past. No longer linked to the impact of the stone block, his death is now assumed to be the consequence of asphyxiation by the pyroclastic flow, a sobering reminder of the catastrophic fury released by the volcano. As we stand among the wreckage of ancient Pompeii, the man's narrative resonates, a painful reminder of the fragility of life and the relentless march of nature's wrath. Though his identity may be lost to time, his memory lives as a monument to the endurance of the human spirit in the face of tragedy. Number 6. Pregnant Woman In the closing minutes before the explosion of Vesuvius enveloped Pompeii in 79 AD, a sad tableau unfolded, a pregnant woman in her twenties with a 32 weeks fetus, desperate to retain a sense of dignity despite the mayhem. Historian Bettany Hughes reveals the sad account of this woman's final steps, shining light on her humanity in the face of approaching disaster. Despite the approaching prospect of catastrophe, the young mother took a minute to care for herself, tenderly arranging her hair and setting her small comb in its appropriate position. It was a modest act of defiance against the turbulent powers of nature, a show of resilience and elegance in the face of looming disaster. As calamity loomed big, she valiantly sought to escape the exploding Vesuvius, her unborn child snuggled inside her belly. Yet, despite her attempts, Destiny had other intentions, and she succumbed to the wrath of the volcano, permanently imprisoned in time near Herculaneum. In this sad narrative, we observe the tenacious spirit of a lady whose dying moments reflect the ageless battle for dignity and survival. Though her identity may be lost to history, her memory lives as a monument to the endurance of the human spirit in the face of tragedy. Number 5. Embracing Lovers Amidst the ruins of Pompeii lies a tragic monument to love's eternal embrace. The skeleton remains of two persons clasped in a passionate embrace, permanently frozen in time. Initially termed the Two Maidens, these entwined figures have grabbed the imagination of historians and romantics alike. Anthropological examination indicated that the couple was not two ladies, as originally assumed, but rather a young guy and an older adult male. This disclosure aroused conjecture regarding the nature of their relationship. Initially thought to be father and son, but subsequently discounted when it was revealed, they were unrelated. The deep hug shared by these people has inspired experts to examine the extent of their bond. Was it a romantic tie surpassing cultural conventions or just a genuine emotional attachment between friends? Though the truth may remain hazy, the timeless picture of their embrace speaks to the human need for connection and camaraderie, even in the face of approaching catastrophe. Number 4. Abandoned Mosaic Flooring Beneath the busy streets of Pompeii, lies a quiet witness to the city's fabled past, a portion of mosaic flooring uncovered by archaeologists, abandoned in the aftermath of the tragic earthquake of A.D. 62. Located inside a home domus, this mosaic originally decorated the floors of a lively family, now devastated in the wake of natural calamity. The area would subsequently be reused as part of the famid stabian baths and various businesses, showing the change of Pompeii's urban environment over centuries. Excavations in the western side of the bath complex unearthed the fragments of this beautiful mosaic buried within a hallway known as Three Tabernae. Beneath the floor level of AD 79, researchers recovered a mosaic ornamented with a beautiful geometric pattern created from black, white, and green tesserae a design evocative of the luxurious flooring seen in Pompeii's temples and wealthy mansions. As we stare at this old artwork, we are taken back in time, visualizing the rich life that once existed inside these walls. 
Though the city may have been devastated by time and sorrow, the beauty of its cultural heritage persists as a monument to the inventiveness and creativity of its residents. Number 3. Stabian Bath Step back in time to the ancient city of Pompeii, where the Stabian Baths remain as mute witnesses to centuries of history. Built in 120 BC, these baths are among the oldest of the three baths in Pompeii and are of the first Roman baths remaining, surviving to this day. Spanning over 900 meters of ground, the Stabian Baths have distinct sections for men and women, each including a network of chambers devoted to specific bathing rites. From cold and warm bathing rooms to a central pool and a gymnasium, these baths provided a refuge for relaxation and regeneration. What sets the Stabian Baths different is its unique characteristics, including a chamber filled with bronze pools for private bathing, guaranteeing solitude for discriminating guests. Despite its antiquity, the baths continued in use up until the fatal eruption of Mount Vesuvius, serving as a monument to their ongoing functioning and significance in Roman culture. From the innovative central heating system to the unmistakable traces of continuing restorations, every aspect of these bathrooms reveals a narrative of creativity and persistence in the face of hardship. Number 2. Electoral Inscriptions Amidst the ancient ruins of Pompeii, a rare find sheds insight on the complexity of Roman politics, a recently uncovered inscription imploring locals to elect Aulus Rustius as a respectable edile. As researchers peel back the layers of time, they give a look into the lively political environment of Pompeii, where the exchange of votes was the order of the day. The Latin poem, engraved onto the walls of a home's shrine, beseeches voters to support Aulus Rustius Verus, a man whose name would resonate through the annals of history. Known for his aims and ambitions, Verus subsequently climbed to the respected office of Dumvir, alongside Julius Polybius, marking an important milestone in his political career. The finding of the election message inside the limits of the Lararium, a room generally devoted for religious worship, raises fascinating issues about the connection of politics and ordinary life in Pompeii. While political advertising were typically shown on the exteriors of buildings, the idea to put this inscription inside the residence symbolizes a more personal link between Varus and the homeowner. As academics wonder about Varus's fate following the disastrous eruption of Mount Vesuvius, they think that his triumph in the Aedile election may have laid the path for his subsequent ascension to power. Number 1. Brothel The Romans were far more frank about sex than we are now. Phallic symbols regularly featured in both religious and ordinary iconography and could be seen everywhere from the walls of temples to the city streets. Brothels were totally allowed in ancient Rome. The use of prostitutes was not stigmatized, provided they behaved themselves with self-control and were not viewed as being extremely needy or addicted to sex. Perhaps most startlingly to us, however, a specific brothel in Pompeii appears to have employed sexual murals on its main chamber as a manner of promoting what services were offered to customers. In much the same manner that we might gaze at the changing menu board in McDonald's while we wait for our order today, those visitors who were waiting for a prostitute or a room could observe a vast choice of various sexual services and positions. The brothel itself, dubbed the Lupinare Wolf's Den, was a two-story structure with ten rooms and a latrine which had been erected only years before the eruption. It appears to have been the sole structure in Pompeii that was meant to be a brothel from the outset. In classic Roman tradition, the walls are decorated with over 100 graffiti inscriptions. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more fascinating stories and facts, be sure to subscribe to our channels. See you in the next video.